it's nice to uh, hear you guys that you're making an effort to uh, get some speakers with regards to our wildlife, particularly the frogs. You know, I will try my best to get you interested. Why do we need to preserve our wildlife? So human activities like agricultural expansion, logging, and poaching are usually the biggest causes of flora and fauna extinction and by the biodiversity loss. Over the last four decades, humans, human activity have greatly pushed some animals, species to near extinction with an estimated loss of about 10,000 species per year. Parang, you know, unti -un araw -araw, siguro may mga endemics species ang bawat uh, nation na nawawala dahil nga sa pagkasira ng kanilang mga habitat. So accounting for the loss of half of the world's wildlife population. Other factors such as climate change causing uh, frequent droughts and flooding. Siyempre, nandyan yung pagkasira ng forest and overpopulation and consumer culture are also to blame for endangering wildlife species. In a bid to counteract this, wildlife conservation is mandatory as it comes with numerous benefits for both animals and humans. So talagang ano, no? um, itong show na ginagawa namin, it promotes wildlife conservation. And I am proud to say that, you know, Born to be Wild has been here already for uh, almost 10 years and before uh, for you know majority of people who see snakes parang they would like to kill it right away and now you'll see in our in, in, in my messenger parang and dami nag send ng photos na they saw this snake it's in a bottle and it's not dead and they want to turn it over, mga pythons, mga rat snakes, uh, mga cobra, mas marami nang natuturn over sa DNR and you know, sa, sa amin dito sa Wildlife Rescue Center na buhay because of education through media. Yun palang ang laki na ng, ang laki na ng uh, impact noon. You know? Why is it important to conserve wild, wildlife? So it, it promotes pollination, and continuity of native plant species. Small animals, particularly bees, insects, butterflies, and birds play an important role in food production. Conservation of these animals therefore aid in pollination. Uh, since they depend on nectar from flower, they are vital in crop production, intercropping and promoting the continuity of native plant species by moving from one flower to another in search of nectar. Bees carry pollen by sustaining the process of crop growth. Um, many times in Bourne, we have featured uh, insects and bees. And yung pinaka ano namin doon, without the bees, we will go hungry. Without the butterflies, we will go hungry because this important insects such as bees, uh, and other insects, sila yung nagpo-pollinate ng mga flowers to become fruit. So kung magkaroon ng you know, mass uh, death of these insects that are responsible to pollination, um, hindi lang ano, no? hindi lang yung mga common fruits ang pinag-uusapan natin. Pati na rin yung mga puno. Yung mga puno that needs uh, pollination, like for example, our national tree, the Nara. Pagka wala yung mga bees dito at uh, hindi nila na-pollinate, hindi sila makakaproduce ng fruit or seed, and then wala nang mag-germinate ng mga, ng mga seeds ng mga puno na ito, and then yun, uh, maubos yung mga puno natin. With food, karamihan ng mga mga fruits natin ay dependent on the pollinators. So, we have documented uh, bees and ang hirap 
sundan yung kanilang life ano kailan mo pag-aralan yung kanilang life cycle uh, meron tayong mga iba-ibang klasing mga bees sa gubat meron yung tinatawag na stingless bees meron yung mga yung mga wild bees na sa forest lang sila uh, uh, gumagawa ng kanilang bahay doon lang sila naghanap ng food nila pero what do we do? What do we do as humans? Yung pag nakakita tayo ng mga wild beast forest, nakuha kagad natin. So, what what researchers does, the people like us, uh, mga biologists, mga vets, we try to educate the locals in sustainable harvesting of honey. So, pag hindi season, wag natin i-collect itong mga uh, honeybee na ito dahil malaki ang impact yan sa ating uh, uh, forest. Next is the protection of biodiversity and endangered species. In the jungle, a lot of animals depend on each other through food chains and food webs. For example, carnivore animals like lions, cheetahs, and leopards depend on herbivores like antelopes. Uh, other deers for their survival. If if an antelope becomes extinct in the jungle or in, in the in the savannas, like that, the effect can be detrimental to the survival of the predators like the cats. It will also affect the survival of other herbivores in the jungle as the cats will depend on the remaining animals of the survival of their survival, which can greatly reduce the population of big animals like giraffe, which takes a longer takes longer to recreate. It also it is also worth noting that the extinction of cats can greatly affect the population of scavengers that depend on cats for their meals and reduce the population of grass and trees eaten by primary consumers such as deer and antelopes. So, Itong setting nito, sa Africa ito, no? Pero, kung gawin natin example yan dito sa sa Pilipinas, ano ba yung mga sa land? What are our top predators? For example, one of my favorite uh, ace or the top predator in in the country would be crocodiles and snakes. So because of habitat loss, uh, nagkakaroon tuloy ng conflict between the community and uh, itong, itong mga crocodiles and snakes. Like for example, saan ba tayo nakita ng mga crocodiles dito sa Pilipinas? Dati, dito sa where I'm staying right now in Calamba, uh, dito sa Laguna Lake, may photos eh, na pag nag-google ka, uh, large crocodile in Laguna. May makikita ka ang laki-laking uh, saltwater crocodile na naninira dito sa Laguna Lake. Pero ngayon, during the 20th century, wala na tayong makikita ang mga crocodile. So what happened to what happened to Laguna Lake? Uh, na-overtake na ng human nagkaroon ng mga nagkaroon ng several fish pens, uh, lahat ng mga waste ng mga uh, factories dito nagdi-drain and even our endemic uh, freshwater fish na uubos na kasi pinakawalan ba naman yung Laguna Lake ng mga exotic fishes so, protecting ecological stability and balance. Conserving fauna and flora encourages ecological stability and balance in the world. The plants, for example, play an important role in ensuring a healthy ecosystem by balancing carbon dioxide and oxygen in the environment. If animal species becomes dominant, whether it is humans or wildlife, it will cause a lot of instability affecting the survival of all plants and animal species in the world. For example, 
if human failed to conserve wildlife and natural habitats, it would lead to the destruction of water supply source, sources causing droughts and dissertations. What is more, uncontrolled human activities like deforestation and logging are known to cause negative effects on the environment, thus conserving wildlife means protecting ecological stability and balance. You know, all of this is happening actually now. Uh, there are a lot of uh, floods and landslides because talagang ano eh, talamak na yung, yung mga mining, talamak na yung uh, illegal logging. Um, experience natin in the first uh, onset of this pandemic where lockdown has happened nung nabigla tayo sa pagdating ng ng uh, COVID-19 sa buong mundo, natakot ang tao, no? Hindi siya lumabas. And in just a few months, we saw how the environment healed. Um, marami tayong makikita ang mga napopost sa social media. Look look at the skies. It's clearer. It's bluer uh, compared to before. Kasi nabawasan yung mga uh, carbon monoxide emitting uh, vehicles ano nabawasan yun at yung mga barko yung mga aeroplano natigil dumiins kagad and even if you look outside uh, your house yung mga ibon naglabasan marami mga photographers bird wildlife uh, photographers na nagpo-post ng mga ibon na nag appear na sa kanilang mga garden. Pero um, sa pangalawang pag-lockdown na ulit, uh, na-realize ng tao na parang kaya niya palang ano, no, dumabas, kaya niya makapagsapalaran kasi sinasabi niya nag-ibutin na siya at uh, kailangan niya nang uh, lumabas. And bumalik na naman tayo sa dati nating uh, gawe na ina-abuse natin ang ating kalikasan. So, um, it can enhance food security. Among the most fundamental roles of wildlife conservation to humans is to enhance food security by protecting natural habitats from degradation and forest against deforestation. The, the, availab the availability of variety of food products would rise. The reason is that wildlife conservation helps in research for promoting agricultural diversity. Habitat protection ensures that there are sufficient and reliable natural resources for supporting agricultural activities, thereby enhancing food security. So, you know, I don't just talk about protecting the wildlife dapat dapat uh, may you know may kasama tayo sa biodiversity may sustainability so pwede naman tayo mag coexist let's try to coexist with the wildlife like i told you with, with the insects if we don't use uh, mga insecticides it serves as a preserve for future generation it kayo na ito no tayo na ito. Uh, if conservation measures are not put in place, future generation will not have a chance to see some of the wild animals that exist today. So many wildlife are reducing at an alarming rate due to human activities. And several such as the Amur leopard, the cross river gorilla, the black javan rhinoceros, hawksbill turtle, south China tiger, the pangolin, the Sumatran elephant are in verge of extinction. For example, ito, napuntahan ko ito mismo in Kenya a few years ago. The only remaining ma male white rhinoceros, the northern white rhinoceros, died as a result of old age, leaving the scientists with a lot of work trying to preserve the semen uh, from uh, si Sudan. You know, si Sudan is a northern white rhino na galing siya sa zoo ng Czechoslovakia. Um, ano sila eh? Parang 
apat silang rhino, dalawang male. Ang kilala ko lang is si Sudan na namatay uh, a few years ago lang. Pero luckily, nakakuha sila ng similia. They were able to get semen from Sudan. And then, there are only two remaining female northern white rhinos. Yan si Najin and Fatu. Um, si one of them, I'm not sure kung sino, si Najin or si Fatu, yung parang uh, na-damage yung kanyang paa. So, uh, sa bigat ng mga northern white rhino, eh, hirap siya maglakad. So, isa pa doon, one of them is already uh, very old. So, yung capability niya of producing uh, uva is is na hindi hindi na siya viable yung kanyang reproductive system hindi na viable para makapag-produce ng uva so in technology na ginagamit is like in in cattle where you try to you know uh, stimulate the ovulation you try to synchronize synchronize it by giving hormones and then i-collect mo yung uva niya and inseminate it with the frozen semen coming from uh, Sudan yung namatay na, na male uh, so northern white rhino so imagine yung pressure sa mga scientists na kailangan nilang impregnate yung female pero hindi yung embryo na yun, hindi siya mangyayari doon kay Najin. I think Najin is the, the younger uh, female rhino na viable pa siya. Hindi sa kanya ipapakarga yung, yung embryo. Kundi sa southern white rhino siya i-implant. And you see, yung technology na ito um, is so expensive but what are the chances that we will be successful. You know, it's really unacceptable that in our lifetime that we will lose the southern, uh, the, the northern white rhinoceros. But nung nandun ako, nahug ko, nahawakan ko yung dalawang uh, northern white rhino and I feel like I'm losing touch with them. Time is running. And um, I'm sure this is the way you feel also na parang bakit, bakit ngayon lang tayo nag effort na try save yung kanilang species when we had the time to prevent that from happening. So despite the advanced technologies, the scientists have been trying to impregnate the female rhinoceros with no success, which highlights that the need to conserve wildlife as human will find it difficult to take up the natural role of wildlife. So, conclusion is only when the last of the animals, horn, tusk, skin, and bones have been sold, will mankind realize that money can, ne can never buy back our wildlife. It's true, you know. Kahit anong gastos mong gawin, you know, I don't know if even the one in Jurassic will ever happen. So, after this one, we can go through some of the uh, frogs so endemic and introduced species of frogs and toads in in the philippines um, some of them i have seen them some of them uh, are are introduced and invasive okay so let's go to the first uh, photo so ito yung uh, uh, philippine uh, flat-headed frog or yung uh, Barbarula busuangensis uh, sa Palawan ito nakikita. No? So, mahirap siya makita uh, sa mga sa Busuanga uh, sa makita. Busuanga is where if you've heard Kalawit, Kalawit is in Busuanga. And ganyan ang itsura na feature na ito ni Dr. Birds, okay? So, you know naman the difference between a frog and a toad, ano? 
So most frogs are are always uh, aquatic. Most frogs, you know, pero meron tayong mga three frogs naman na arboreal sila. Uh, and then, yung kanilang uh, balat ay usually smooth. Pero itong flat-headed frog nito, may makita kayong medyo rough ang kanyang balihibo. But they're, they're slimy usually. So next slide. So, Philippine toad. Hindi ano sila eh. Hindi sila talaga Philippine toad. Ano? Um, ito, maraming tawag dito. Meron tinatawag na palakang kabkab. Merong ang tawag is uh, palakang araneta. These are the, the toads that are being used for dissection. You know? So, um, Buffon day. Um, it, it, it is not true that it's, it is endemic to the Philippines. You know? um, introduced ito. And in fact, yan ang threat sa ating mga endemic frogs. Uh, pumunta kami dati sa Negros and uh, marami kaming mga pinipicture ng mga endemic frogs dun sa Negros. And ang uh, nagulat kami, nung merong isang lungga dun sa, sa lupa na nung hinukay ko, ang nakuha ko ay isang napakalaking bufo marino, itong uh, marine toad na ito. At siya yung mga kumakain ng mga endemic frogs natin. So they have poison glands here in that area. And uh, they're usually terrestrial, look at their skin, it's very rough and napaka-invasive nitong uh, marine toad na ito. Palawan toadlet, ito, endemic ito. No? Uh, I've seen them also in um, the Peloprini. Uh, I've seen them in in Kalawit. Uh, hindi na lumalaki yan, kaya toadlet ang ang tawag sa kanila and uh, very rare na rin sila very rarely seen um, mga distinguishing marks nila is that white line there I realized before when I went to to Karawit may maraming mga malilit na palaka doon tapos uh, nuli ko and then pinituran ko and pinakita ko doon sa isang curator ng Avilon. Sabi niya, Palawan Toadlet daw yon And then, pilit niya akong gustong iwi yun, pero hindi ako pumayag. You know? That is uh, smuggling again, uh, this uh, endemic species. You can only collect in the wild if you have permit uh, secured from the DNR. Palawan uh, hindi pa rin ako nakita ng ganito pero there is something similar to this one that I've seen in Mindanao the Mindanao corn frog uh, and ang pinaka distinguishing characteristics niya is itong protrusions niya sa eyelids niya upper eyelid so this species has an elongated triang triangle horn present on each upper eyelid and a pointed snout. The pupils are vertically vertical with a dark brown iris. There is a fold of a skin separating the head from the body. Dorsally, the skin is generally light brown or gray with uh, one or two pairs of dorsal ridges extending from behind the head down to the groin. The dorsal part is usually covered by small patches, by patches of small tubercles. The body is shaped and color resembles appearance of a forest ground floor. Dark triangular blotches occurs behind the eyes. Uh, so next, usually mga hapnyan hindi yan mabibigit. Spine tree frog. So, Napakaganda, no? Pero in actual, 
hindi ganyan ka orange yung uh, nakita ko medyo light brown ang itsura nitong spiny tree frog uh, they're found uh, in the Philippines uh, which occurs in Mindanao Leyte, Bohol and Basilan So possibly wider males measure about 35 millimeters and females about 41 millimeters. Mas malaki mga females. So when we measure reptiles and amphibians, it's always SDL, snout to vent length. So mini measure yan dito sa snout hanggang doon sa vent or yung kuyatan nila. In, in cases of uh, other reptiles like the snake and the monitor lizard, merong tinatawag na total length pa. Kasi may buntot sila, may measure mo ngayon yung snout to vent, tapos yung total length from snout to the tip of the tail. Okay, so may nagtutunan kayo. Tapos yung gear dito sa, sa, sa may chest area saka doon sa pinaka-widest part ng abdomen. Pwede mong i-measure din yung gear nila. Okay, so next is the uh, malindang tree frog. So its natural habitats are subtropical and the lowland forest. Uh, so moist and mountain forest. It is threatened by habitat loss. Next. Next, the Mindanao flying frog, Rakoporus by Makulatus. Hindi ko pa rin nakikita ito, pero ang ganda nito. Huh? So, it's a species of frog in the most, most frog family, the Rakoporidae. Uh, ito mo, no? M mga foreign scientists pa mga foreign biologists pa ang nakakadiskubre sa mga magagandang frogs natin. It is known to occur in islands of Bohol, Mindanao, and in the south of Luzon. It might also be found on other islands as its uh, known range brackets main chain of the Philippine archipelago. Who knows, this might be extinct already kasi ang ganda niya pero hindi pa namin nakikita. So its natural habitats are subtropical in or tropical moist lowland forest, subtropical or tropical moist mountain forest. So pag nakakapunta kayo sa mga mossy forest, usually mga puno doon hindi matataas parang para sila mga bonsai. If you go to a mossy forest and ang kakapal ng mga moss dyan, iba-ibang klase ng moss. Uh, Tapos ang altitude niya sobrang taas, very foggy na sa area na yan. And looking at the characteristics of this Mindanao flying frog, talagang ano, no, uh, yung mga, mga toe pads niya is meant to attach itself uh, to leaves of, of the trees. Tapos kailangan uh, high humidity. Next slide, please. Uh, ito, Kalula. I think this is also introduced yung Kalula species. Ano? Uh, marami na yan dito eh. Itong Kalula, yung Kalinga narrow uh, mounted frog. Uh, maingay ito. They make a sound like a cow. And it's round... It is a round, wide-bodied, short-headed terrestrial frog. It is a uh, palatal, palatal ridges are behind its posterior nasal apertures. So, ano ito? Nakakatawa ito, minsan pag nag-deflate, parang para siyang balloon na, na sumisingaw. So, ano ito? Invasive din yan kung saan-saan ko na nakikita itong uh, kalula na species ng frog na ito. Next. Giant Visayan frog. Uh, it, ito yung tinatawag namin fang, fang 
from. So it is endemic to the Philippines and is known from Masbate, Cebu, uh, Negros, Guimaras, Panay, and City Hall. Okay. Um, pati sa Mindanao, meron din ito. Its natural habitats are subtropical to tropical moist lowland forest. Subtropical or tropical swampland, tropical uh, moist mountain. So very ano siya, adaptable itong species ng fragmate ko, yung limnolectes. So very familiar na itong mga limnolectes na ito kasi every time nag hahanap kami ng mga frogs sa forest, Dracophorus, Limonectes, uh, Platymantis, yan yung mga napag-aaralan namin parati. And you know, when you're hosting a wildlife show, sometimes you don't need to mention those scientific names kasi uh, hindi naman siya kaagad ma-absorb ng mga viewers natin. Ang gusto nila yung mga common, common names. Mas matatandaan nila yung maganon kaysa sa mga scientific names but very important thing scientific names for people like us who are interested in this frog kasi there will come a time na meron magpapa-ID sa atin ito and ito mga genus nila uh, merong uh, mga certain distinct uh, features and characteristics ito mga family ng frogs na yan. So there are three reasons why frogs are important in our ecosystem. One, frogs are an integral part of the wood, the food web. Tadpoles keep waterways clean by feeding on algae. Adult frogs eat large quantities of insects, including disease vectors that can transmit fatal illnesses to humans. For example, mosquitoes and malaria. Frogs are also also serve as an important food source to diverse array of predators, including dragonflies, fish, snakes, birds, beetles, centipedes, and even monkeys. Thus, the, the disappearance of frog population disturbs an intricate food web and results in a negative impact that cascades through the ecosystem. So, frogs are bioindicators. Yan. Sila yung pinaka good example of bioindicators. What are bioindicators? When you see, still see frogs, especially yung mga endemics natin, alam mong uh, ano pa, healthy pa yung forest dahil yung water source eh hindi pa contaminated. But if you go to a place where it has been mined already. Makita mo iba na yung ano, iba na yung kulay ng ng pinaka uh, ground stream ng ng ilog ano, yung pag nakita mo medyo orange na or kulay lupa na. Ibig sabihin na disturbed din. Ang hirap maghanap ng mga endemic frogs natin diyan. So, most frogs require suitable habitat in both the terrestrial and aquatic, aquatic environment have permeable skin that can easily absorb toxins and chemicals. So that's why they are by indicators. Kasi konting contamination ng tubig eh, na absorb na nila and they will not survive with a contaminated uh, environment. This trait makes Frogs especially susceptible to environmental disturbances, and thus frogs are considered accurate indicators of environmental stress. The health of frogs is thought to be an indicative, to be indicative of the health of the biosphere as, as a whole. Frogs have survived in more or less their current from two and two uh, two hundred fifty million years, having survived countless ice ages, asteroid crashes, and other environmental disturbances. Yet, now one-third of amphibian species are now in the verge of extinction. Nakalungkot na meron pa tayong mga hindi na didiskubre at naunahan tayo ng 
pagka-extinct nila. So this should serve as an alarm call to humans that something is drastically wrong with the environment. Three, uh, frogs are important in medical research that benefits humans. So frogs produce a wide array of skin secretions, many of which have significant potential to improve human health through their use as pharmaceuticals. Approximately 10% of Nobel Prize in physiology and medicine have resulted from investigation that used frogs when a frog species disappears, so does any promise it holds from improving human health. Okay. So that's it. I, I think um, since you guys attended this webinar, that already means that you are interested in conserving our wildlife. And the, the fact that you know what endemic and exotic means, that already means a lot that uh, you understand what needs to exist in, a, in our environment and what we need to, to keep uh, and preserve in the forest. So um, continue believing that we can still do something in our lifetime with regards to wildlife. After all, in my lecture, we see we saw that um, keeping our wildlife uh, healthy and keeping them uh, alive to this day will they in return they will give back to us no matter whether it's an animal or a plant or a tree uh, as long as we we preserve and and conserve the species and I, I think we can we can uh, be a healthier environment you know hindi na nga healthy yung politics dito tapos <laughs> hindi pa magiging healthy yung wildlife natin eh you know it's taking too much out of, of what we have in in this uh, lifetime dito sa Pilipinas no? hindi lang Hindi lang porket sa Pilipinas mo kino-conserve yung ating wildlife is tayo lang nagbe-benefit na yan. What we conserve here in our country, the whole world benefits from from it also. Thank you very much. <laughs>